Nashville down by 14 midway through the second half. Early in the season, Grambling was 2-10. Look where they are now. Next up, a second-round matchup Friday night against Purdue in Indianapolis. Purdue is the number one seed in the Midwest Regional. The Clippers got back on track last night with a 13-point win at Portland, 27 for Paul George. James Harden had 14 assists. No debates, no speculation, just the info you need. That's your KBLA Sports Minute. I'm Ray Richardson on KBLA Talk 1580. All I need is one mic. Reparations Now has been a rallying cry in this country and around the world for decades. But the demand has taken on new urgency with growing momentum on the issue led by the state of California, which has completed an extensive study and put forth recommendations to enact reparations. California's reparations actions have huge nationwide implications. The California Task Force was the first of its kind in the nation, and the states of New York and Colorado recently voted to take on the issue. Dozens of cities from coast to coast, including San Francisco, Boston, Los Angeles, and Detroit, have started their own reparations commissions. One of the first known reparationists was Callie House, who toured the nation advocating for reparations in the 1890s. But never in this nation's history has the movement to heal the harms of enslavement, institutionalized racism, and the system of white supremacy seemed so strong. The topic remains untouchable for most elected officials, and the call for reparations has not yet garnered widespread public support. Polling shows that most Californians agree that black fellow citizens are still suffering from the damage done by slavery and Jim Crow, but they still do not support cash reparations. The California Legislative Black Caucus has introduced a package of proposals for bills that do not include one penny of cash compensation, restitution, or repair. Governor Newsom and other lawmakers have distanced themselves from the concept of cash payments. While Newsom is right, cash alone will not repair our collective harm, the state's goofy legislative package ignoring monetary payments is disingenuous. California lawmakers need to step up and put a reparations bill for cash payments on the table. The issue of how it is funded, the timeline, or whether it impacts our current budget challenges can be addressed. But we must strike while the iron is hot or the window of opportunity will pass us by. If you agree that it's time for our lawmakers to add a bill enacting cash payments to their lineup, call them at 916-319-3868 and say, if it doesn't include cash, it ain't reparations. That's 916-319-3868. Tell him Cali House sent you. From Bruce's Beach to the California Task Force, the Golden State is a trailblazer when it comes to reparations. The world is watching. We must rise to the historical moment and set a precedent for cash payments along with legislative remedies and policies addressing the systemic badges of slavery and Jim Crow. We must insist on measures significant enough to help close the racial wealth gap. California must stand for cash, and the time for reparations is now. For KBLA Talk 1580, I'm Dominique DePrima. We welcome your comments. First things first. First things first is the DU General Money B. I'm going to put you up on the schedule. Six to nine, eight weekdays, not two and seven years ago. We got a lot to talk about, so much to pedal through. Unapologetically progressive. Tune to KBLA 1580 to get the mess. We're your ancestors' favorite radio station. First black on talk radio, left side of the nation. Me and Dominique the Prima go way back. Smiling, making sure the station stays black. Discussing all the issues in our community. We host the black and brown and others find unity. So let's talk about it. Maybe we can improve it. Digital underground, always down with the moon. Come on. So we tune in. The first things first with the queen of black talk radio. Dominique to Prima. Go, sis. KBLA Talk 1580. Good morning and God bless. I'm Dominique DePrima. This show is called First Things First and my very first thing today and every day, giving thanks, giving praises and asking for blessings. 
from God, asking for the blessings of the ancestors and the elders, and kicking this thing off. Usually we go left coast, hour one, looking local. Hour two, we go national, international, and beyond. And in the third hour, we do a deep dive on a hot topic or with a person of interest. Today is a bit different, but it's all um, sort of on the vibe. Well, um, we're going to be joined by Barrington Salmon, a uh, journalist in hour two to talk national issues. Really looking forward to that. He is a brilliant, brilliant uh, journalist. And hour three, we'll be talking about the secrets of CMOS with McCoy Zeno of Zeno Wellness. That should be amazing. Uh, we, yeah, I've been doing some homework um, in that regard in terms of the many uses of CMOS. So we'll get into that if you're on your wellness trip. Um, yesterday, we were talking about the Goon Squad in Mississippi. They named themselves that. We didn't name them that. That's Rankin County Sheriff's deputies. And they all pleaded guilty to assaulting and torturing, uh, uh, terrorizing, basically, uh, people in Rankin County, two specifically two black men and one white individual. And we were meant to talk with Marquel Bridges, but he was inside that federal courthouse and was not able to join us. Well, he's joining us now. He's the co-founder of Black Lives Matter Grassroots Mississippi chapter. He's founder of Building Bridges, which is uh, an organization that really was key in helping to expose those six white Mississippi uh, former cops, the Goon Squad, and the racist attacks against these two individuals, Mike, Michael Corey Jenkins and Eddie Terrell Parker. Um, Marquel Bridges, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Prima. You know you got to call me, Dominique, but uh, man, let me just say um, congratulations. I mean, I don't, I don't know if that's the right word, but it kind of feels like it just because it seems like um, with these Goon Squad verdicts, your hard work, the work of those families, of, of the victims, and, um, you know, the community are really being uh, rewarded in a sense. Yes, definitely. Uh, it's it's amazing. Um, I don't know if it's congratulations, but I am, it, it gives me hope. I'm, I'm, I'm thankful uh, that... that we are seeing some accountability um, and, and that it started in Mississippi. And hopefully this trends throughout the uh, entire, entire nation. Uh, I've been with the family since day one, the first one to tell their story, the first one to put it out and expose them and uncover uh, various things uh, and help them find the resources they need. Um, so it's just amazing. I think I think after the day uh, when um, the last two, I think it'll kind of hit home more than it's hit home right now. Okay, so tell us where we are now. We talked some about, um, you know, the two sheriff's deputies who were uh, who were sentenced a day before yesterday. I think one was 17.5 years and the other one was 20 years. But if you would sort of, for those that weren't with us yesterday morning, give just a, a, a quick encapsulation of this insane case and then what happened yesterday okay uh michael corey jenkins was visiting his friend eddie parker um eddie had been taking care of a, his paraplegic friend a young white lady they were friends in high school elementary school so he's been taking care of her um for years and that's why he was at the residence so mike um doing the normal thing coming to visit his friend um a neighbor called Brian McCaplin, the leader of the Goon Squad, who orchestrated this whole attack, he actually gets sentenced today, um, called him and said, there's N-words in our neighborhood, um, do something about it. He calls the rest of the Goon Squad. They meet up at a fire station, uh, formulate their plan uh, via text message um, and strategy. Then they formulate their plan to, to, to kick in the door. They assess, is it any cameras? and line up at every point of entrance and kick in the door, come straight in, terrorizing, beating, brutalizing. Uh, they tased both individuals over 30 times, waterboarded them with milk, um, alcohol as far as liquor, um, syrup, uh, poured chocolate syrup on them, threw eggs at them, uh, beat them, tased them, um, grabbed, uh, excuse my language for the radio and for the, the women and the people, but i got to tell the truth. They grab uh, dildos and sexual devices, 
um, and begin to attempt to um, anally rape both men. Um, they made them shower to wash off the evidence um, and then put them back in handcuffs, kneeled them both down, and that's where Hunter Edward uh, puts the gun in Michael Michael's mouth, pulls the trigger one time, it dry fires, puts it back in his mouth, pulls it again, and it shoots my, Michael in the mouth, severing half of his tongue, coming out the right side of his jaw through his neck, um, and causing uh, lifelong damage uh, upon all the torture. Uh, Brian McCaplin, the one who got 40 years, was actually sitting on the on the bed smiling. Um, it came out in court. It is said in Indian South, smiling. Um, all all of them took place in the attack. While they were being attacked, um, other, other gentlemen were um, – searching the house they had a throw down gun um to plan on them they sent um methamphetamine and illegal drugs that wasn't recovered from the house to the lab to try to put on them with in resulting that that, that would have gave um uh, that would have gave michael 30 years um that that would have gave michael 30 years and just a bunch of horrendous things the the guy alan smith the one who got 40 years yesterday he had sexually assaulted another gentleman on the side of the road, beat him, just horrendous, shooting their guns off. They both shot their weapons off beside they ha- inside the house, beside their head, um, to scare them in- into false um, information about drugs, which the both men kept telling them, there are no drugs, we haven't did anything wrong, why are you here for this two-hour-long torture session? So um, the shooter got 20, 20 years plus three years on probation when, when he when he gets out. Um, Middleton, who, who was not the leader but the supervisor, he got 17.5. Um, Daniel Updike, who um, was fairly new to the goon squad, fairly new as being an officer, um, he held the guy on the side of the road for Chris Deadman to come torture him in plain clothes. Um, he got 17.5, and Chris Deadman, um, one of the most evil ones, right along with Brian McCaffrey, who's been orchestrating this type of activity for 20-plus years, he got 40. So the last two we have today is Brian McCaplin and uh, Joshua Hartfield. And that's Joshua Hartfield is the officer from another um, area who was actually on the scene, Richland Police Department. I mean, it just sounds like a frenzy of violence that that just went on for hours. That's, you know, it's unbelievable. I mean, it's I believe it, but it's just, I don't even want to say shocking because it's not shocking, but it's just pretty over the top. Two hours of, of that kind of activity, um, these these men have to be beyond traumatized. Definitely, um, they can't sleep. Um, they say they every time they close their eyes, they, they, they see it. You know, Eddie Parker described it best when he spoke in court to the to one of the worst ones. That's the only time he spoke to Chris Deadman. Other otherwise they read the letter that they had wrote and he told the judge and he told him that the devil came knocking on my door. And I think that's that's the best way to describe these events. Um, good versus evil. Mm. Um, they know now that it was a hate crime and a racist attack. Um, because they, they they recovered their text message three that said so that they was the intention was to to, to run these N words out of town. They called them N words. They called them monkeys. They called them boys and told them to get back to their side of town in Jack. So I mean, it's not always easy to prove a hate crime, but when you have text messages where you actually lay out the fact that it is a hate crime, uh, that's that's you know, gold when it comes to evidence, right? Definitely, definitely. And uh, it's very important to understand that the sheriff, Brian Bailey, has almost walked Scott free from this, and he's the ringleader. There's no way these every officer that testified in court um, said that, that this started under his watch. Seven years, they said that this is the culture, and they even said this is how you move up. If you want to get a promotion, if you want to get an investigator job, you have to torture black people. You have to do illegal stuff. That was said in open court. 
talking with Marquel Bridges. We're talking about uh, this self-proclaimed goon squad in Rankin County, Mississippi, and how they are meeting their comeuppance with uh, sentencing yesterday, the day before, and in fact today, Marquel Bridges from uh, Black Lives Matter Grassroots Mississippi and Building Bridges has been key to making this happen, and we will continue the conversation when we come forward. You're welcome to join if you have a question or commentary, 800-920-1580. We are elevating black and progressive voices around the clock. We are KBLA Talk 1580. She's reclaiming her time on KBLA Talk 1580. More First Things First with Dominique DePrima when we come forward. On your period, sudden gushes happen without warning. But now, you can say goodbye to stand-up gush fears. Thanks to Always Ultra Thins with Rapid Dry technology. It absorbs gushes two times faster than the leading store brand and gives you up to 100% leak-free protection. Hello, clean and comfortable with Always Fear No Gush. Climbing is king. Climbing is king. At KBLA Talk 1580, we believe that caring for the community means caring about the climate. You might have heard that we announced a pretty bold 12-month, $2 million campaign to do four things. Increase climate literacy, turn up the volume on communities of color and the climate conversation, connect everyday people with the resources they need to survive and thrive, and highlight frontline climate justice crusaders of color throughout this year. KBLA Talk 1580 will be bringing you insightful interviews on all of our shows to help raise your climate IQ. Each quarter this year, we will also be hosting free climate events in various communities throughout the city with food, fun, and forward-thinking conversations. Thanks to partners like LADWP, Metro, Caltrans, the Sierra Club, the California Community Foundation, the California Endowment, AQMD, MWD, and more. You'll also be hearing more about a couple of national town halls broadcasting live from Los Angeles, to which you will be invited. And we'll be rolling out a robust social media campaign on all our platforms, as well as an outdoor media campaign, all designed to educate, enlighten, and empower you in our fight for climate justice. We want cleaner air. Caring about the community means caring about the climate. At KBLA Talk 1580, we believe that we really can change the world. If we care enough, we care enough, we care enough, we care enough. Easter's on its way, and I wasn't going to let this year's celebration have empty baskets. That's why I'm so glad I went to Kohl's. I found toys under $20 and saved extra as a Kohl's Rewards member. Then with an additional 15% off, I found Apartment 9 dress shirts for my husband at $25.49 and got myself some cute dresses under $30. Plus, I earned Kohl's cash. So take my word for it. Hop on over to Kohl's for great brands and great prices. Select styles. Kohl's Rewards offer ends March 24th. 15% offer ends March 30th. Some exclusions apply. See store or Kohl's.com for details. Sometimes Sometimes we lose, sometimes we win, sometimes we try to fit it all in, sometimes we don't know what's in store, sometimes we find what we're looking for, sometimes we're rolling easy and free, sometimes one and one makes three, so much to love along this ride, that's why Nationwide is on your side. Nationwide Mutual Insurance Company and Affiliates, Columbus, Ohio. Hey, what are you doing up on the step stool? About to clean these light fixtures. The whole family's coming over. And if there's even a speck of dust in the house, my abuela will find it. Here, I got a Swiffer duster to help with that. A Swiffer what? A Swiffer duster. It has this cool extendable handle that reaches six feet to get high and low with fluffy dusters that easily trap and lock dust. So no more step stool? No more step stool. Easily trap and lock dust from hard to reach places with the Swiffer Duster. Love it or your money back. Your ancestors' favorite radio station. Radio station. And your favorite morning show host. Let's get back to Dominique DePrima right now. Right now, right now we're talking with the co-founder of the Mississippi chapter of Black Lives Matter, grassroots founder of Building Bridges, um, Marquel Bridges, um, been on the ground working on this uh accountability, if you will, for the self-proclaimed goon squad there in Mississippi, which consisted of five Rankin County sheriff's deputies and one cop uh, from another jurisdiction. But, Marquell, do you suspect that there are a lot more people in the sheriff's department? And you mentioned uh, Sheriff Brian Bailey, and I know you guys are trying to get him out of there. But do you suspect uh, that there are more 
um, lower level officers and deputies who have been participating in this stuff for these, um, you know, according to actually a, an investigation by the New York Times, a couple decades. Definitely, uh, twenty twenty years. Um, it's, it was came out of Oma Court that it's the entire night shift. Uh, we know it's more. We know some is um, the State Street Mafia is what they're calling their that's moved to the Capitol Police, um, and it's a picture. Um, with, with other officers and shockingly, um, a Mexican, um, a Latino ex brother, and a black gentleman that's a part of the goon squad as well. So, this is deeply entrenched, um, in the Rankin County Police Department and in the departments of Mississippi. Um, the world needs to understand that they're not saying goon as in the thug or, or in the way we use slang to say goon. They're, they named themselves after Lloyd. Goon Jones, a guy that was known for terrorizing and killing black people, and um, he's he's also the guy you see on a lot of those civil rights pictures in Mississippi, sicking dogs on people. They say it's rumored that he's killed over twenty-seven black people. Um, wow. So there's and, and a trustee, a black trustee at the jail, actually killed him, uh, Korma, uh, for for how he had, was treating him and just the things he had witnessed him do. Um, so they named their name after him. Um, the, the sheriff, the sheriff of Rankin County even came out and said that that's his mentor. And all of these officers said that Sheriff Bailey was their mentor and Brian McCaplin. So the, their way of policing is beating, torturing, um, planting drugs, throwing down guns. Um, and that's what's expected. So there's a, there are a lot more. And um, the, the, the black citizens and all citizens, as we know, with Brother Alan Smith, the white gentleman who was uh, sexually assaulted and beat and shot the gun by his head and just traumatized him. We know that until they are all off the street, no, none of our, no citizen in Mississippi are really safe. I mean, to me, one of the things that's very chilling about this is that they did this to these guys and they didn't kill them. Because it means they felt that they could get away with it. They knew they could, they've been getting away with it, right? Um, because what from what I was reading uh, about that New York Times investigation, multiple citizens had come forward with formal complaints and even lawsuits, which had been ignored. And there were around similar kinds of things, with being having their homes busted into in the middle of the night and being tortured and uh, attempting to you know get false confessions from them and this kind of thing. Um, and basically... The system of justice has just been dismissing those uh, those claims. So to me, that's one of the most chilling things. They shot this guy in the mouth, and they didn't kill him because they didn't think there would be any consequences. I want to I want I want to explain and be very clear, clear to your viewers of what I mean. For, for the Michael Jenkins incident, um, the incident at 135 Connolly Road, um, Chris Deadman pulled up in regular clothes and in and, and his squad car and had just left his son's game, his son's baseball game, to get on the action. When he tortured and, and sexually assaulted Alan Smith um, on the side of the road, he was in plain clothes. He actually took the gun out of Daniel Updike's holster and shot it by Allen, shot it by Allen's ear, um, in plain clothes on the side of I twenty. They feared no consequence. All of this is shocking to them. They even pled guilty. They 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 feared nothing. The state of Mississippi, and we have to know our people have to know, and, and America has to know that the state of Mississippi never charged them, never wanted to charge them, and was never going to charge them until the federal government charged them, and they were forced to. And even then. They, they gave them significant sentences, but they suspended it all. So the, the shooter got 20, they suspended 15. The, the, um, and then it went from 15 to spend 10, 10 to spend five, all the way down for the six officers. So the state of Mississippi thought that this was okay, you know. Mm. Um, um, James Farr from The Conversation Live, he's in the YouTube chat. He wants to know, uh, more about the conditions on the ground there in Mississippi for activists like you. And, you know, have you, and I'm adding this part, but how much pushback have you encountered during this, the course of your work on this case? 
the first time we uh, came to Rankin County, you had, um, I'll say, conservative um, Klansmen with AR-15s um, trying to stop us from getting to a, a Confederate statue. Um, you know, there's Confederate statues at every courthouse in Mississippi. Every state. Court. Okay, Mark Wall Bridges. I think I'm pretty brave, but if it, if a Klansman with an AR-15 confronts me, I'm out of there. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not gonna lie, unless I have one too. <laughs> that's that's cool. When, uh, sadly, I'm, I'm I'm used to it, but even more than that, you know, I just trust God because I'm I'm definitely have my own fears, and you know, I'm human, and I'm definitely not bulletproof. Did you just say you're but, used to it? Yeah, I'm used to it. So, wow. but but you know, I know nothing comes without sacrifice, right. and I'm just willing to sacrifice everything for my people, even my life. God forbid. Hope that never happens. Yeah, but, we pray you know, that never happens. I mean, you got babies, <laughs> yes, <laughs> you know. Yes, but and, yeah, sadly, um, I just believe that's the mindset that we have to have fighting the oppressors. We're 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 fighting, and this this is not just Mississippi. Um, I'm one of the things you didn't call out. I'm on the rapid response team for, for, for BLM, uh, grassroots. And, and, um, it's all over the country. Me and, me and, um, Andrew Joseph, uncle Drew, as I call him, we just left Memphis where they let, um, bugs left a brother in the jail cell, let, let bed bugs and lice eat him alive. And that's on his coroner's report. Uh, Ramon McGee, you know, Think about that. Just eat him alive in his nose, his stomach, holes everywhere from, from bed bugs. And he was mentally ill, so they just left him in the room. They wasn't feeding him. His mom was putting money on his books. Just horrific. They killed several brothers in, in Memphis. Um, every, everywhere we go, it's the same scenario. Um, no equal no equal justice. So I, I honestly hope this is a trend for our whole country. We, we can look at George Floyd killers didn't get these type of years. No, that's so that's Memphis, right. That's we right. We have started something here, and I hope it sends a clear message to policing, to the culture, and to the whole world. For one, our people, that we don't have to take this. And if you speak up and don't be intimidated, you can get justice. Two, to these crooked ass racist cops, that you will be held accountable. You know, we're going to use your same system uh, against you. And and if with the right people, if the right people get involved with the with the right plan and stand by this family, you can get accountability. So I hope they think twice, knowing that they can get 40 years now before they just kill us. Yeah, I, th- I hope so, too. I, I pray so. Um, we, we have news, traffic and sports right now. On the other side, though, I want to talk. I want you to explain a little bit more about what the Black Lives Matter grassroots rapid response team, you and uh and uh, Uncle Andrew, uh, Uncle Drew, what you guys do, what that really means. And also you revealed to me off the air that some of the things that were coming out in court during the sentencing were things you guys didn't even know, despite all your activism and investigation around this case. And I want to I want to hear some of those. I've already learned quite a few things that were not reported in the press just in our conversation so far. All that's coming up on KBLA Talk 1580. More of First Things First with Dominique DePrima when we come forward. I'm Mike Moore. Here's the latest from the Black Information Network. The Biden administration is announcing a new tailpipe rule that calls for the majority of new passenger cars and light trucks sold in the U.S. to either be hybrid or all electric by 2032. The new rule calls for a target of 35 to 56 percent electric vehicle production by eight years and a target of 13 to 36 percent for hybrids. The state of Georgia has executed its first death row inmate in over four years. 59-year-old Willie Pye was put to death late Wednesday by lethal injection after the Supreme Court denied his final appeals. Pye, who is African-American, was convicted of the kidnapping, rape, and murder of his ex-girlfriend. His attorney said his life should have been spared because he had an intellectual disability. And that's the latest. I'm Mike Moore from your 24-7 news source, the Black Information Network, and BINnews.com. Feel plenty good by incorporating silk into your morning routine. Silk's delicious plant-based beverages help bring a daily dose of goodness. 
They are rich in calcium and a good source of vitamins A and D to support the health of you and your family. Shop wherever you find groceries. Is this, the this is the KBLA Sports Minute with Ray Richardson. Ray Richardson. For all the Grambling State alumni in the L.A. area and around the country, this is a fun time for you and your school. Grambling's men's basketball team playing in the NCAA tournament for the first time in school history beat Montana State Wednesday 88-81 in overtime in Dayton, Ohio. Grambling is the ninth HBCU school to win a game in the NCAA tournament. Backup guard Jamel Coffer scored all 19 of his points in the second half to spark the Tigers to a comeback win. The Tigers were down by 14 midway through the second half. Early in the season, Grambling was 2 and 10. Look where they are now. Next up, a second round matchup Friday night against Purdue in Indianapolis. Purdue is the number one seed in the Midwest Regional. The Clippers got back on track last night with a 13 point win at Portland, 27 for Paul George. James Harden had 14 assists. No debates, no speculation, just the info you need. That's your KBLA Sports Minute. I'm Ray Richardson on KBLA Talk 1580. Imagine with me here for a minute the most beautiful panoramic setting. Maybe it's an endless ocean, waves crashing on a beach, or a crystal clear mountain lake, peaceful and quiet. Or maybe it's just little kids playing in the park down the street. Wherever your imagination takes you, now imagine, right smack in the middle of this perfect picture, a piece of litter. Just one piece right there in the middle of it all. Doesn't exactly fit, does it? In fact, even though it's just one piece, now it's all you can see. That one piece ruins everything. And that's the thing about litter. It doesn't take much to ruin everything. One thing's for sure, it simply does not belong anywhere in California. So here's the good news. If we work together, we will change it. We don't have to let litter, even just one piece, ruin your perfect picture. Not anymore, not ever again. Clean California, zero litter is the goal. Brought to you by Caltrans and cleanca.com. Paid for by government.com. Did you know? The United States Mint has issued a new Morgan silver dollar coin in proof condition for the first time. Not only that, they are also minted in 99.9% pure silver for the first time ever in history. Coin experts are calling this an amazing opportunity for anyone that knows the enduring popularity of Morgans. But you must hurry. Only 400,000 of these legal tender silver dollars were issued. These first ever Morgan silver dollars are brand new with stunning mirror like finish. Minted by the iconic San Francisco Mint. Call now and you're guaranteed a new first ever 99.9% pure silver proof Morgan dollar. To learn more, call 1-800-973-9717. If you order now, you will receive a free coin collector bonus pack, a $25 value free with every order. Call 1-800-973-9717 now to secure your new Morgan silver dollars before they are gone. That's 1-800-973-9717. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. What's up? <sighs> I'm tired of feeling so bloated. That used to be me. Then I got this. Align bloating relief plus food digestion. A probiotic, right? Yeah, it works naturally with your gut to help soothe occasional bloating and gas. Plus, it has vitamin B12 to aid digestion by helping convert food to cellular energy. Two benefits, one capsule. Align bloating relief plus food digestion from the number one doctor-recommended probiotic brand. Get $5 off at alignprobiotics.com. Why choose a Sleep Number Smart Bed? Because no two people sleep the same. Only the Sleep Number Smart Bed lets you each choose your individual firmness and comfort your Sleep Number setting. The Climate 360 Smart Bed is so smart, it actively cools or warms up to 13 degrees on either side for your ideal sleep temperature. And now, during the final days of our President's Day sale, save 50% on the Sleep Number Limited Edition Smart Bed, plus 10% off all bases. Ends Monday. To find a store near you, visit sleepnumber.com. I have a secret. Uh-huh. I use secret whole body deodorant because more than just my armpits stink. Oh. Uh-huh. Can I use it where my bra rubs under my... Oh, <laughs> yeah. And what about down there? You know, my... Totally. Four out of five gynecologists would recommend it. So I tried it, and now I get 72 hours of freshness, freshness. from my pits to my... Ooh, I love that it's a spray. Me too. And it comes in sticks and creams too. Go get your secret whole body deodorant. If you're looking for the most epic place on Earth, let's start at the base of a massive waterfall. Then trek through the thick jungle. Then climb to the peak of a snowy mountaintop. Then once you get there, keep going. Because with intelligent 4x4 and 7 drive modes and a Nissan Pathfinder, the search 
is the real adventure. Available feature. Intelligent 4x4 cannot prevent collisions or provide enhanced traction in all conditions. Always monitor traffic and weather conditions. Thanks for waking up with Dominique DePrima on KBLA Talk 1580. And we are talking with the founder of uh, Black Lives Matter Grassroots Mississippi chapter um, in Building Bridges. He is Marquel Bridges. And talking about this Rankin County Sheriff's Department and apparently other adjacent police departments, because at least one officer is not a sheriff deputy, that are being sentenced right now. And you really just told the story so vividly. I mean, so many things that I did not know um, that you explained. But you said there were things during the course of this historic sentencing. I mean, we're talking about some some hefty, hefty sentences this judge has handed down so far to four um, of the perpetrators here. But you said there were some things, Marquel, that came out in the courtroom that you didn't even know about. So uh, share with us some of those. Um, the span and the depth of the evil in within this department, the things that they've done to people, um, as you have said from the New York Times investigation, 20 years. So if, if you're, you're, you're comfortable enough, part of it was sealed in the, in the plea agreement, but, but what did come out was that Deadman had 10 pages worth of incidents where he's tortured and sexually assaulted um, victims. I don't really even know what to call them, people, people he pulled over. Or 10 pages. Suspected. Yeah, 10, 10, 10 pages. Um, so it's a reason they pled guilty. The things that they have on these officers, even the nature of what they did to Michael and Eddie is way more gruesome than what you're hearing. They, it was some sick game. They were taking turns with spoons, anything they could find, a sword, um, a piece of wood, anything they could find, they could use it. The, the gun was fired off in the house a total of, of, of three times. Um, and, just, just their their nature and how often and how like nobody feared consequence. Nobody feared getting in in in, in trouble um, or anything. So they have really been torturing the citizens, the black citizens mainly of of Rankin of Rankin County. Nobody's surprised. It's a it's a part of the culture. And all six, well, no, all four. The last two are today. All four that that have came up so far have blamed it. Like, my life went bad when I started working at Rankin County um, Sheriff's Department, and this is their culture. This is how you get promoted. They personally recruited Daniel Updike. So imagine how evil you have to be for them to say, hey, you, you fit right in over here. That's crazy. So um, hmm? it, it seems like it was – it. You know, like you said, 20 years. I mean, there's just no way that all those folks are probably ever going to get justice, right? All the people that have been hurt by these folks. Uh, Marquel, can you hear me? Yes, yes, ma'am. What you say? Oh, are you in court right now? <laughs> are, you, are you guys heading in to the courtroom? Yeah, well, no. We we're trying to they they gathering up. I'm I'm good. We got I got a little bit more time. Okay, so um, well let the, let me skip that question then. Um, explain um, what what the rapid response team that you're part of does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's just they they can never they can never get all the victims, even though a lot has came forward. You know, and that's the that's the the biggest part about why people got to stand up and speak up. What you inspire in others, you know, this happened to a gentleman a month, not like a year before, a month before they did this to Michael. They did the exact same thing to a white gentleman on the side of the road that Degman said, Officer Chris Degman expected of robbing one of his family members. So, like a revenge thing. Um, and, and talk a little bit about what the rapid response team of Black Lives Matter Grassroots, what you guys do. Okay. Um, and it, I don't, I'm, I'm getting on the elevator, so if I cut out, that's what it is. Okay. But um, I, we're, we're really, essentially, um, I don't want to sound uh, prideful like we've got an ego, because if you know me, you know that's not the case. Yeah, we've lost um, Marquel Bridges. He's riding the elevator, but we'll uh, continue um, this conversation as soon as he gets off the elevator. He's at a federal courthouse in Jackson, Mississippi, and today is the day that the last two of these six uh, law enforcement officers will be sentenced 
uh, in in relation to the torture, um, sexual assault, beating of these um, two black men and one uh, white man also by the side of the road that Marquel was referencing. So far, we've seen huge sentences. I would imagine, based on what Marquel is saying, that at least one of the two uh, officers or, or deputies that will be sentenced today will receive some significant time as well, based on the fact that he is thought to be the mastermind of this specific crew, uh, the main um, organizer or leader of this group of sick individuals. And even though they're saying, you know, this is how they moved up in the department, it sounds like they became obsessed, caught up, and, and were really just a sick individuals. Um, uh, do we have you back uh, off the elevator, Marquel? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, perfect. Um, so, yeah, well, you were talking about the rapid yeah. response team. Yes, I was saying to not be prideful or anything. If you know me, you know that's not the case. I'm very humble. Um, but the rapid reveal ingress was rapid response. Me and me and Uncle Uncle Drew, um, we're really like uh, the perfect team for the simple fact that he's he's a he's a, he's an impacted family. He's an impacted family, and um, he understands the grief part of what's going on he understands what these families are going what these families are going through um from the beginning he understands what they what they need and what the court systems look like on the the civil the civil side and criminal side and he understands what you have to do in the basic steps that none of our people are aware so many of us are perishing from ignorance um when the people who you think in your mind who society set up and presents itself are to protect and serve and help you, what do you do when they're the criminals and they kill your loved one? Mm. And I myself, um, these families take uh, a liking to me because I'm genuine. I have never asked them for anything. I never will. It's all about justice with me. Um, I know that God gave me this purpose, and I come in and love and support and give them every resource at my disposal and some that I make along the way and just teach them and be there every step of the way. And I know I'm that's right. <laughs> I know that's right. I know. I know you have that great energy too. Um, so I know you got to go, but I I do want to. You said you know they're the criminals. They're supposed to be protecting us, but they're the criminals that are preying upon these people. And we certainly we've seen that from the goon squad. So two final questions before I let you get into court. One, do you believe? I mean, you mentioned uh, the this other group that's calling itself the State Street Mafia. Do you see it similar to the L.A. sheriff's deputies gangs where we have actual um, criminal gangs inside our law enforcement that are recruiting and that are actually even uh, terrorizing other cops and deputies in order to, um, you know, to, to move up in the department and commit violence against black people in, in particular and other people of color and poor people as well? Okay, it uh, sounds like he's uh, dealing. Oh, no, I'm here. I'm oh, here. yeah. I'm so, do you, do you think that these folks are gangs like uh, like the like the L.A. Um, law enforcement gangs that we have? Do you see them as a similar kind of organizations? Definitely. Um, the Capitol Police have something called the Street Street um, Mafia that that they have created, and the Capitol Police in Jackson, Mississippi. Is made up of all these bad cops everywhere. They they leave their department and come to the Capitol Police to get a job. Um, but it's definitely gang culture. Um, the goon squad had coins. I'm glad you said it. Thank you, Mr. Prima. I didn't want to leave this out. The goon squad, I, I, I wasn't aware until court that military, police officers, even um, FBI have this thing where they create challenge coins. Well, the goon squad had made their own coin. Um, it was Middleton as as the, the the supervisor over the night shift on one side, and it was a black man with a noose around his neck and a Confederate flag on the other side. Wow, hate so crime was much? Walking around in their pocket. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, and and I guess the final question is: What are you expecting in court? And how historic is what we've seen so far? What are you expecting today from these last uh, final two law enforcement officers they're sentencing? The judge has certainly been, you know, outspoken in saying this is horrendous, despicable, and unacceptable. Well, Hartfield um, 
for the lack, I'm, I'm not sure if it's the lack of evidence or the lack of participation, him being from a different department, or if he cooperated um, with the government. But he's expecting a sentence of the maximum of 12.5 for his role, the officer from Ridgeland, Ridgeland Department, Joshua Hartfield. And um, the ringleader. Yes, the orchestrator, we're expecting a the same, if not more, because he's more evil and have been doing it the longest. He's been at Rankin County for 20 plus years. It's really said it to all stem from him. He's uh, Sheriff Brian Bailey dog that he sicks on people mm-hmm. and, and basically covers for him. So that's um, McCaplin. So we're hoping to see 40 plus or even more for for McCaplin. And McCaplin I guess and I guess the next the, the next goal is getting that sheriff. He has said he won't step down. Uh, this this uh, Brian Bailey character. He said he won't step down, but that I'm sure that doesn't mean you're giving up. Oh no no. Um, th- this is in fact what we learned in court. What we know now. Um, this is even more reason to put more pressure. On him, man. We have all the ammunition we need. His own cops, six, well, four. I keep saying six because it's a six in total. But four of the officers that have came before um, the court already said it comes from him, and that's the culture of that police department. You can't have a culture. Um, culture is affected by leadership. So mm. he's guiding it. You, there's no way. Twenty, 20 years, Miss um, Dominique. I got it right, Miss Dominique. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you you can't have that and nothing no complaint hits the sheriff's desk no nobody told see this this how this happens the people everyone's not scared to speak up people speak up you go to the sheriff going over the lieutenants and the sergeants who head because you know they dirty too and when you get to the sheriff you didn't realize he was dirty too so mm-hmm. he takes a complaint mm-hmm. and nothing's ever done about it Wow. Well, I, I'm so much for the blue wall of silence if four of them have already spoken up against him. And I'm hopeful that longer sentences and true accountability will lead to more of this uh, throwing under the bus of ringleaders inside these law enforcement gangs. Yes, 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 indeed. I'm hoping these high sentences make them turn on each other and and everyone can get justice and we can shut down Rankin County Sheriff's Department. Markwell Bridges, thank you for all the amazing, amazing work that you've done and the rapid response team and, and you know, especially there in Mississippi. Uh, you want to give out your socials uh, in case, you know, so folks can track your work. Definitely. Uh, Markwell Bridges, M-A-R-Q-U-E-L-L Bridges on Facebook and TikTok. Uh, Black Lives Matter Grassroots Mississippi on Instagram. Um, and yeah, I ain't hard to find. All right. Well, uh, thank you. And looking forward to, um, you know, seeing what comes out in court today and and uh, continuing to enjoy at least seeing some accountability. Um, I don't know if enjoy is the right word, but certainly it, it, it is a great feeling to see some real accountability for some terrible, terrible crimes. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Absolutely. You as well. Perfect time to call me if you want to weigh in on this or something else that's on your mind. 800-920-1580. I'm Dominique DePrima for KBLA Talk 1580. A safe place to go loud. loud, loud. A great place for progressive politics. KBLA Talk 1580. I'm getting vaccinated with Prevnar 20, a Pfizer vaccine. So am I, because I'm at risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. If you're 19 or older with chronic conditions like asthma, diabetes, COPD, or heart disease, or are 65 or older, you are at increased risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. Ask your doctor or pharmacist about Prevnar 20, pneumococcal 20-valent conjugate vaccine. It can help protect you against pneumococcal pneumonia in just one dose. Even if you've already been vaccinated with other pneumonia vaccines, Prevnar 20 may help provide added protection. Prevnar 20 is approved for adults to help prevent infections from 20 strains of the bacteria that cause pneumococcal pneumonia. Continued approval may depend on a supportive study. Don't get Prevnar 20 if you've had a severe allergic reaction to the vaccine or its ingredients. Adults with weakened immune systems may have a lower response to the vaccine. Side effects include pain and swelling at the injection site, fatigue, headache, muscle, and joint pain, 
For full prescribing information, please call 1-855-213-2138 or visit Prevnar20.com. J.P. Morgan Chase is building on the investments in California to help close the racial wealth gap and build a more equitable future. Visit JPMorganChase.com slash racial equity and get the tools to help reach your financial goals. With your Los Angeles Public Library card, you can access the latest music, movies, audiobooks, ebooks, graphic novels, and more, all for free. Check it out at lapl.org slash emedia. That's lapl.org slash emedia. <coughs> oh, this cold. Honey? <laughs> Honey? Honey, you need DayQuil Severe Honey. DayQuil Severe Honey gives you powerful cold and flu symptom relief with a honey-licious taste. Because life doesn't stop for a cold. Okay, I'm ready to go. <coughs> now I'm getting a cold. Honey. Try DayQuil Severe Honey for powerful cold and flu relief. DayQuil Severe with honey flavor. The daytime coughing, aching, stuffy head, fever, honey-licious, power through your day, medicine. Use as directed. Keep out of reach of children. Pizza's here. Oh, great. I'd love some, but I'm worried about my stomach issues. If you're worried about having diarrhea, gas, bloating, stomach pain, or loose oily stools, it may not just be stomach issues. It could be a condition called exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, or EPI. With EPI, the pancreas doesn't release enough enzymes to break down food, but EPI is manageable. Use the symptom checker on identifyepi.com and talk to your doctor. That's identifyepi.com. Sponsored by Abbott. <laughs> Heard any other talk radio lately that sounds anything like this? We didn't think so. You're listening to Unapologetically Progressive, KBLA Talk 1580. Uh, you are. There's so much going on here and, you know, here on the left coast locally. But I really wanted to focus our, our ears on understanding this case in Mississippi with the Goon Squad and the incredible work that's being done by uh, Black Lives Matter Grassroots Mississippi and, you know, and, and the national organization as well. Kwamel Allah says he wants me to explain my shirt. It's a little Black History Month is every month, a little Women's History Month, a tribute to some uh, great Americans, uh, Sojourner Truth, uh, Garrett Morris, Phyllis Wheatley, Frederick Douglass, Edmonia Lewis. Uh, those are all folks that uh, if you don't know, now you know, <laughs> as Piggy would say. Actually, the one I was least familiar with when my dear friend Sherry Bell gave me this shirt was Edmonia Lewis, who is a a, a black woman who became a sculptor, making these huge stone statues. There's one of them in the Smithsonian uh, called The Death of Cleopatra. They're beautiful. And she um, she was educated here in the States for a while and then actually fled. Uh, I believe she fled to France or England, I can't remember, and did her work there for many, many years. Um, some of her pieces were lost and and were later rediscovered. The one that's in the Smithsonian apparently was rediscovered, covered with graffiti and dirt, um, and was restored and now has taken its place. She was the first, uh, not just the first black woman, but the first woman of color uh, in the modern era to have received, and when I say in the modern era, I mean era, I mean since we've been keeping track, right? Who knows what they were doing in ancient Kemet, but the first in uh, since we've been keeping track to... to uh, receive international acclaim as a sculptor. And she actually, um, oh no, it was Italy. Okay, it was Italy where she moved uh, to to run away from the racism here in the United States and continue her work in education. Um, she was, she would make her pieces herself. Like a lot of sculptors, they, they make a design and they say how they want it to look and then they hire workers to actually carve that stone. But Miss Edmonia Lewis, nope, she did it herself, chip by chip. And that's pretty remarkable. Uh, a black woman. Um, so happy Women's History Month, LOL. And yeah, I, you know, I'm trying to represent and, and spark your interest uh, by, by putting on this shirt. Um, be, I'll be keeping an eye on that conversation, that uh, court case today. And we'll report back tomorrow on what happens Um in, you know, in court in Mississippi, Jackson, Mississippi. The, one of the crazy things that I want to point out from what um, Marquell was saying, first of all, I had never heard of the um, State Street Mafia, which is, according to what Marquell is telling us, a gang, a police 
or law enforcement gang in the capital of Mississippi. And what makes this even more problematic, remember the state government of Mississippi, which is very right-wing Republican and racist, three words that often go together, RRR, right-wing Republican and racist, um, has been attempting to make the Capitol Police the police for Jackson, Mississippi. Because, remember, they've been trying to strip all authority away from this black mayor of a very blackety black, black city. In fact, the only city in America where we've seen an increase in the black population over the past decade, Jackson, Mississippi. They are trying to put the Capitol Police over Jackson and take the authority for policing this town away from the actual mayor, which is insane. It's kind of like um, internal colonization, right, within a state. But I already thought this was problematic because if I'm the mayor of a city, I want to control my own police force, right, if possible. Um, Ask... (laughs) You know, ask Asia Brown about that city of Compton, right, where she herself um, was harassed by the county sheriffs that she did not control who who currently patrol the city of Compton. But I digress. Now that we know these Capitol Police are part, you know, are, are the home of a very violent racist gang, which I just learned about today, the State Street Mafia. That seems a million times more problematic. You're taking, you're trying to take authority away from a black mayor over a majority black city within a white governed state. And it's one of the reasons why this talking point about democratic cities being, you know, ish holes is so silly in many cases in states like Mississippi. Um, or Louisiana, where you have a state government that is predominantly older, white, conservative, anti-justice, racist individuals. They refuse to fund the schools properly. They refuse to fund public safety in the ways that those cities, those Democratic cities within Republican states are requesting, and then they turn around and point fingers at the Democratic leadership when things don't go as planned. And um, if you look at Mississippi, Jackson, Mississippi's water crisis, it's a perfect example of this. The state had refused to fund the infrastructure, water infrastructure, for these black people in Jackson for decades. And then when it breaks down, they point the finger at Antar, Chokwe Antar Lumumba, and say, see, these these Democrat." Mayors, rah, 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 these Democrat cities are hell holes, blah, blah, blah. Well, imagine you, you have a known racist gang that's actually, you know, a, along the same lines as this goon squad. And now the state authority, the state legislature, the white folks, Republicans in uh, over the state apparatus are trying to make these guys the overseers for Jackson, Mississippi. I'm just connecting the dots here, right? As we hear this horrendous story of the way these folks are operating, this goon squad, self-proclaimed goon squad is operating. And I didn't even know they were named after this famous racist, uh, Lloyd Goon Jones. Um, As we connect the dots, we can see that this, this is a desperate struggle by these racist Republicans to maintain the terrorization of our people through law enforcement. News, traffic, sports, and then national news on KBLA Talk 1580. KBLA 1580 Santa Monica.